a very interesting piece of news. According to the Department of Homeland Security, computer hardware accounted for 9% of all types of counterfeited goods seized by the US Customs. Counterfeited chips. Now, counterfeiting a chips means most of the time I sell you a Pentium 3 and on the top of the chip I will print Pentium 4. In Chinese shops it's happening all the time. <laughs> but it's very easy now to embed something strange at the production level because the capacity to embed hardware at ASIC level it's in everybody's hands now. Chinese factories are producing very much sophisticated integrated circuits. So the technology to embed malware in your hardware it exists, it's available and on the table and probably it has been already used. Danger of fakes, how counterfeit defective computer components from China are getting into US warplanes and ships. You have to start to get seriously worried because we, we are talking about US because US it's hitting the news very easily but why not Malaysia? After all we are all buying the same equipment. It's manufactured for, every, for all of us in the same part of the world. There are only few companies who are manufacturing chips. And even if they don't want to embed, even if they're clean companies, there are ways, uh, we will see later, that malicious people would uh, adopt to embed malware in your hardware. Well, I actually uh, highlighted China when I think about the global economy implication. You see the results, all of us uh, understand the results of a global uh, economization. No? We have a single world and the result of the globalization it is that service, the high service level is still in the western world but the, the production facilities, the production capability has been moved toward China and the lower service capability has been moved toward India. Call centers. No, a lot of US companies are using call centers in India. So even if you think you are buying a domestic product because it's labeled made in US, it was actually assembled in US, but most, or in Malaysia, but most of the, of the hardware, chip, logic circuits are coming from Far East. Now, again, connecting to Marcus Ramos today uh, opening speech. His big, biggest mistake uh, during his speech, uh, I don't want to criticize uh, him, I'm just having a different opinion. And you are here, you are, you're very lucky because you have the chance to hear two different people saying two totally different things. Then you are smart guys, you can make up your own mind. <laughs> My task it is to tell you that I don't, I don't agree totally, but totally on the speech, I don't know, did you hear the speech this morning? Must, okay, I, I totally don't agree on what he was saying, totally. First time in my life. <laughs> because he was, he was too much US centric and too much marine centric. The world is not anymore as it used to be during the Vietnam War. When we had beefed up, Jewish up marine guys with big mass Rambo style, you know, that are, were killing the enemies. Now the war is a totally different level. This is the age of asymmetric warfare. And he was saying, uh, if anywhere any embedded spyware would be used, would be, US would be the one to use it, not the other countries such, for example, Liechtenstein, he was saying. I'm saying the totally opposite, opposite thing. If I am Liechtenstein, and if I am at war against the United States, I, I know I have no chances to survive a traditional conflict with traditional weapons. So I would move what Iraqi did to the asymmetric warfare. Iraqi, they choose the asymmetric way of warfare by doing guerrillas, city guerrilla. Being Liechtenstein guy, I might choose to go on the cyber spyware, cyber warfare. After all, the Great Wall of China was useful thousands of years ago, today it doesn't have any more sense. Because if, if I want to hit my enemy, I don't need to cross the border. I don't need to deploy my paratroop, paratroopers. I don't probably need to shoot any bomb. 
I will hit through the network and I will cause economical damages. Economical damages, this is warfare. My enemy will lose and my enemy will suffer. How would you embed, if you were the evil guy, how would you embed spyware at the hardware level? I tell you how would I embed it. First of all, I would try to hack from remote the manufacturer's CAD station. Even if the manufacturer is a legitimate company, doesn't even think about embedding something uh, strange in the chip. Do you have any idea how complicated is a logic circuit? Once it's designed, it's, it's, it's a group of systems of systems of systems of subsystems. And when you watch the whole big picture of a, of, of, of a chip, computer chip, you get lost. So it's very easy to hack something and to embed some extra uh, circuits at card level. Or, for example, just substituting the CAM files at the production facility. So the manufacturer was designing the proper chip. Well, I will just substitute the whole project or part of it during the production level. Or, for example, it already happened. Full hardware counterfeiting sold through unofficial channels. It's very easy today to buy Cisco routers which are not Cisco routers. I am wearing Gucci shoes, paid $10 in Egypt, coming from China. <laughs> you might be able to buy, at a discounted price, a counterfeited Cisco router coming from God knows where. There is also a big business in hardware refurbishment. They are taking used uh, network appliances, they are refurbishing it, cleaning it, polishing it, and then reselling to you with a guarantee. Well, this is a perfect time to substitute some of the components and to embed something strange. But assuming it's difficult, I would embed something at core component level. The same Cisco, they are not manufacturing any, uh, everything. No, they have to rely on several other component manufacturers. So I would probably hack some component, external component manufacturer, some subcontractor facility, and I will embed something in a specific chip. Then Cisco will buy it and will implement it in its own equipment. Or why not? If I cannot hack, if I cannot substitute, if I can do nothing, I can still intercept the good physically and substitute them. It's very, I would pay some bribes to some guys in the Russian custom, for example. He would buy 10 boxes of vodka, would be very happy. And I will have very easy access to the stored goods, which are just transiting through the custom border, and I will just substituting with my own goods, embedding my own malware. And if you are a government, you're buying these goods to protect your own infrastructure, then I will have access, full control of your critical infrastructure. This is not any more science fiction. The, there are so many and too many examples in the real life already happen that should ring a bell in our head. Now, we have several places in which we could embed malware at hardware level. Computers, phones, network equipment, security equipment, backbone routing, phone routers, printers, IP surveillance. You have this, I don't know if you see this little red circle. Uh, it means uh, already done. So in network equipment, backdoors have already been discovered. In security equipment, undeclared backdoors have already been discovered. In the backbone routing equipment, Cisco, backdoors have already been discovered, service purposes. Okay? In phone routers, we had a big scandal in Greece uh, uh, two years ago where uh, the, uh, Vodafone Greece was actually supplying CIA with uh, uh, data invoice interception by using an embedded uh, backdoor in uh, Ericsson routers, telephone routers. Nobody knows why this backdoor was included, probably for the same um, service purposes, but still it was used by CIA. Printers, I gave you the examples, and why not? We have IP surveillance cameras, I would embed something even there. Now, that's why 
there is a big need and everybody should do something to put pressure to the industry to change the way the law they're actually ruling the world of the IT security. Whenever I'm buying a piece of hardware, any equipment which is meant, for example, to manage national security and critical infrastructure, that piece of equipment should be totally open sourced, totally verifiable. I don't give a shit about patents. We already have the legal patents which are protecting your rights. Why then you shouldn't allow me to do some reverse engineering? I will not anyway the possibility, I will not have the possibility to copy your equipment because it's already protected by the copyright law. So at least open up your hardware, not only the software, and let me see what's inside. And you have now to demonstrate, you have, you General Motors, uh, you have to demonstrate me now when, when I'm buying a GM SUV, eventually my ties will not explode. So you, computer manufacturer, you will have to demonstrate to me that your computer is a legitimate computer. Your um, security uh, UTM infrastructure uh, equipment is not embedding anything uh, bad. We should refuse once for good to carry on the shoulder, on our own shoulder, on buyer's shoulder, the weight of the load of trusting the equipment that we buy if the equipment is going to manage our lives. And the very, very big changes has, have, have to be done, need to be done at low level worldwide. It will be very difficult. There are already some uh, um, free hardware foundation. I found three over the internet. But they're very little project, uh, and they are, let's say, they're not screaming enough. I never heard anybody at conferences speaking about the need of having open source hardware. So if you are working at government level, my suggestion to you it is, well, put pressure over the hardware manufacturer. They want to sell security equipment to your government, good, but then they have to open it up. At least at government level, you should have the right to see what's inside without going through fancy uh, military programs such as the Trust in AC uh, program, which I was showing you before. It makes so much sense to me. It's so logical. But still, we are all blindfolded and very much well educated by the, by the lobby, current lobbies, that we are keen to accept the current rules under which we are buying the equipment if the, the, the software is defective, it's our fault. We carry the responsi responsibility. The software producer is not liable of anything. If I have damages, if I lost data, if lives are lost because of the defective software or defective hardware. So if nothing starts from our side, nothing will happen. So what I wish it is, I don't have the time to do it. Neither the will. I already have too much trouble. My, yes, but my, my scope here as a security consultant, it is to, to speak about this possi such possibility. Let's try to have an open source hardware on which critical infrastructure will be based. Now, the, I, I was adding this slide by uh, specific request of Dillon, the organizer of the HITB conference. If you remember one year ago, I introduced um, Wabi Zabi Labi, which was the exploit marketplace uh, project. You know? So we set up this company in Switzerland, and we were thinking, well, the security industry is totally lobbied. Uh, the final customer doesn't have any control over what they are buying. Is it secure or not? And the security researcher, if there is any sort of security today, it's thanks to the job done by the security researchers. They're not paid. The, they are ethically blackmailed uh, when the lobby, the, the security lobby, they say, well, you are a security researcher, you found some bug in some software or some equipment, then you should be ethical and you should release this information for free, okay? But then we have corporation 